It's a great day in South Carolina, as Bobby Hitt would say, so it's, it's a great day in South Carolina. I want to welcome everybody to this special announcement between the University of South Carolina and Boeing Company. I'm Bill Kirkland, the Executive Director of the Office of Economic Engagement, and we're thrilled you all made it here today from the other universities, Midlands Tech and everyone, so we're really excited about this. Uh, I want to first, if I could first take a moment and welcome our elected officials who have joined us here today. Apologize in advance if I didn't see you or shake your hand, so please forgive me for that. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Henry McMaster, uh, Attorney General Alan Wilson, Comptroller General Richard Ekstrom, Speaker of the House Jay Lucas, uh, Secretary of Commerce Bobby Hitt, um, our great mayor, uh, we could spend hours talking about Steve Benjamin, but our great mayor of Columbia, Steve Benjamin. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and also for all the city and county council members, I can't go through all of you, but I do appreciate you being here. And also our chamber presidents, I saw both Lexington and Richland. I'm not sure about the other counties, but I, I greatly appreciate you being here. I'd also like to recognize our board of trustees. I've uh, shook hands with a lot, so hope if I can go through uh, Tommy Caulfield, appreciate you coming. Uh, Thad Westbrook, Paula Harper Bethay, Gene War, Thad Westbrooks, Westbrook, William Hubbard, Leah Moody, I think. So, hey, Leah. Uh, and also William Hubbard. I uh, hope I apologize again if the names I was shaking hands. Um, I also, I'm, I'm grateful to, uh, that we got a group here from IBM that we had an announcement, as we all know, about October, November last year. I'm very grateful the members of the IBM leadership team are here. With us in Dover, we announced a partnership to include IBM Innovation Analytics Center at USC, and their support is greatly appreciated. I know that uh, we have Tom Kilkenny, who's their general manager uh, of the entire aerospace industry for IBM, and also Andy Bernadine and Mark Easton. So uh, they're, they're here, so I do appreciate you guys being here today and coming in. Uh, today is an important moment for us, uh, and, I'm, and it, for us, and it truly represents Dr. Pastidi's visionary leadership on bringing USC research into the fabric of private sector research efforts. Uh, in July of 2013, Dr. Pasiti tasked the Office of Economic Engagement with champion the kind of corporate partnerships you're about to hear about today. Uh, the Office of Economic Engagement is comprised of Technology Commercialization Office and our Business Development Leadership, responsible for identifying partnering opportunities for University of South Carolina to leverage the research as assets for commercialization. Uh, this partnership being announced today will include several our colleges, and we have some of our deans here. That would be the uh, College of Engineering and Computing, the Dollar Moore School of Business, and also some Center of Excellence, and one would be, as an example, is a condition-based maintenance center led by Dr. Abdel Bayoumi, and I, I know that Abdel is here somewhere. Um, I also would like to personally thank our Office of Economic Engagement staff uh, and the McNair, McNair, Team McNair team, uh, led by Michelle Van Toren. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts, Michelle. Uh, and also the leadership, USC leadership from Terry Parham to our sponsored research group was heavily involved in a master research agreement discussion, which Lane will tell you, quickly move forward at light speed, right, Lane? Light speed compared to other universities, so we're, we're happy about that. That's a good thing. Uh, but also I want to recognize Lane Ballard and Greg Islip, their boss, his, his vice president, for leading their team, the, he's vice president of research and technology, and also the other leaders of your R&T team at Boeing and Boeing South Carolina. Uh, their efforts over several months with my team uh, resulted in making this day a great day for Columbia, USC, and South Carolina. So I do appreciate your efforts and, uh, there at, at Boeing. Um, but for me, because of it was Dr. Pastee's uh, vision of putting an office together, for me this is, this is one of those put a, it's not the last deal we'll do, but put a ribbon on, the, on, on at least one package. Uh, because it was Dr. Pastee's leadership that it really gives me a, a truly honored today to have an opportunity to introduce him and let him speak about the partnership. So everyone could uh, please welcome my president and our president, Dr. Pastidi. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill, and good morning again, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to our McNair Center. It's an important day for the university, for the Boeing Company, and for the great state of South Carolina, the one that we love. The McNair Center, as you know, as everybody knows, is named in honor of South Carolina native and NASA astronaut Ronald E. McNair. We're delighted to have Mrs. Cheryl McNair, who joins us from Houston today, 
We'll be hearing from her in a few minutes, and Cheryl is joined by her cousin, Sarah Gay. Welcome to you, Sarah. Darla Moore gave us the name, the Ronald E. McNair Center for Aviation Innovation and Research, and I knew the moment she uttered it that it was the perfect name. Of course, we all best know Ron McNair as an astronaut. As a boy, I would listen to that term and think about it in a very uh, Star Trek-y kind of way. My parents, who uh, pretty good at English, but they knew Greek better, said, well, of course, that's a Greek word. Ast astro, the stars, and nautical, or naftis, to sail. So an astronaut is someone who would sail to the stars and beyond. And who would have ever thought that a young boy from Lake City, a young black boy from Lake City, would have had the opportunity to sail to the stars and beyond. Ron McNair attended Carver High School, a then segregated school in Lake City, graduated in 1967 as valedictorian. Now, Ron McNair was probably unique in that perhaps he needed less help than most young people today. But think of all the other children today, black and white, female and male, in small towns like Lake City or even small cities like Florence or Charleston, all around the state with a little more help could also sail to the stars. So the McNair Center can help young people in our state be just like Ronald E. McNair. They may grow up, we hope, and work for a great company like Boeing or one of the Intertech companies or Nickelodeon or Viacom, and you'll know why I said that in a little bit. Of course, the Intertech companies, uh, their leader, president, and, and uh, founder uh, is Anita Zucker, and we're so happy to have Anita uh, here today. Of course, Jerry Zucker was the founder of these wonderful companies, and Marva Smalls will be with us in a little while. And we're happy to have Jonathan Zucker with us as well, president of the Intertech group. I often refer to these three great uh, women benefactors, but more important than benefactors, visionaries, Darla, Anita, and Marva, as the Mount Rushmore of the University of South Carolina, <laughs> of South Carolina, and we need, we, need a, we need more female Mount Rushmores, don't we? I know we do. And of course, a warm welcome to our Boeing partners, our new partners and colleagues and friends, Chief Technology Officer John Tracy, who worked very, very hard to bring, bring this day to fruition, and Executive Vice President and General Counsel, Judge Mike Ludig, and many other Boeing guests who I think you'll get to meet as well. So our partnership with Boeing uh, that John will outline in, in a minute puts USC as a worthy university partner and as I hope as a force for contributing to the knowledge-based manufacturing economy and R&D economy of South Carolina. Ron McNair, I'll go back to him just for one more minute, was our commencement speaker in 1984 here at Carolina. And he said, and I quote, he said, the road between South Carolina and space flight is not a simple one, nor one filled with any guarantees. In fact, the only guarantees to be found are those that reside in the unchallenged depths of one's own determination. So today, we're taking off with lots of determination. The determination of a great company, Boeing, the world's largest aerospace company and leading manufacturer of commercial uh, jetliners and defense space and security systems. Of course, they're a top leading U.S. exporter. The company supports not only airlines for the U.S. and allied government, but customers in 150 countries. We're taking off with a great university where the McNair Center is South Carolina's university-based aerospace center to provide innovation with our Boeing partners, where we're leading to pursue public-private partnerships, including the one with our friends at, I at IBM and with others that Bill mentioned before. And we're taking off as a university where we educate students and business partners and executives at the Darlemore School of Business, 
continuing to be the nation's top undergraduate and graduate international business program. And we're taking off in one great state, and everybody can agree to this. We know that the 2015 forecast of South Carolina's economy is for steady economic growth. It's home to major corporations, but also to medium-sized technology companies and, and many small businesses. It's also the great state that we love because of its beautiful places and smiling faces. But it's also a state, and let's not forget, where hardworking men and women go to work every day. They go to work at Boeing. They come to work at our university. And they dream that they'll have the South Carolina and the United States a dream for themselves and for their families. And I ask that we remember them today. So this announcement marks the culmination of uh, many months of conversation and many months of study and negotiation. I'd like to express my thanks again to Bill Kirkland and his great team, and of course to our scientific leader, Dr. Gerdahl, and to Michelle Van Toren. This educational collaboration you'll hear about announced uh, right now will train our future workforce, will grow aerospace as a major industry cluster, and will boost the economy and overall social and cultural well-being of our state as well. We're proud to partner with Boeing in this latest public and private partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pastides. Uh, it's an honor that uh, I get the opportunity to meet or meet with Dr. John Tracy in St. Louis back in, uh, it was December, uh, and it was an honor to meet with him and Chris Chadwick, which led to a, a lot of other discussions, like with Judge Ludig and, and beyond. But uh, just a background and, and talk about John Tracy. Don, John is the Chief Technology Officer of the Boeing Company, the world's largest aerospace company. He is Senior Vice President of Engineering Operations and Technology. Dr. Tracy is responsible for various company-wide organizations, including its engineering function and its advanced R&D unit. These entities collaborate with partners both inside and outside the company to help Boeing grow and be more productive. So ladies and gentlemen, with me please welcome Dr. John Tracy. Uh, thanks for the kind welcome, Bill, and on uh, a good day to all of you. On behalf of the 165,000 Boeing employees around the room, I'm very pleased to be here in uh, Columbia today to make this announcement. Uh, I'd like to extend a special welcome to the members of the South Carolina Legislature uh, who have joined us today. We at Boeing are particularly appreciative of the support you've given us uh, as we strengthen our presence in South Carolina. I'd also, of course, like to recognize Mrs. McNair. It was a pleasure uh, to meet you this morning. Thank uh, you to you and your family uh, for encouraging young people to pursue careers in STEM, uh, the STEM field. Uh, your outreach efforts are helping build stronger communities and serve as a fitting tribute to the inspirational legacy of Dr. McNair, who I was personally inspired by for many years. And of course, I'd like to thank President Pastides. Thank you for your kind words and also to acknowledge the rest of our friends here at University of South Carolina. I'm going to start by talking about a little bit of history. Uh, it's a history, though, that's well known to many of you in the room because you were part of making it. You allowed it to happen. You created it. In 2009, we at Boeing announced we'd construct a state-of-the-art final assembly factory in North Charleston. Today, that facility builds the 787 Dreamliner airplanes, a sophisticated jetliner made of composite materials that's delighting passengers and airlines all around the world with its outstanding performance. Since 2009, uh, we've stood up a propulsion systems team that's responsible for select engine-related components of two forthcoming Boeing airplanes, the 737 MAX and the 777X. You can hardly wait to see those, I know. <laughs> We've also, since then, opened an engineering design center and an information technology center of excellence. Both of these sites provide expertise and support to our entire company, not just to the activities here in South Carolina. And late last year, we opened up a new R&D center in North Charleston. This facility supports uh, Boeing teams across our company 
by leading our research in advanced manufacturing with a special focus on aircraft components made from composite materials. This past February, we opened a 225,000 square foot uh, propulsion engineering and assembly facility in North Charleston Well. And so that brings us to today's announcement of a master research agreement be between Boeing and the University of South Carolina. Our current plans and the agreement call for us to invest roughly $5 million uh, to doing research in state-of-the-art and advanced uh, aerospace technologies. Boeing and the university will work in up to about seven technology areas that are critical to aerospace, and our initial projects will focus on subjects such as finding more efficient ways to create airplane components from carbon fiber composite materials, developing better techniques for joining aircraft parts, and creating automated manufacturing processes that help improve structural efficiency. That's some kind of sign that this is the right thing to do, I think. <laughs> it's from the heavens. Uh, we believe our collaboration with the university ultimately will strengthen Boeing's competitiveness, bolster South Carolina's prominence in the global aerospace arena, and reinforce the institution's stature as an R&D leader that President Pastides talked about. That very reputation in R&D is what led us to consider the University of South Carolina as a potential R&D partner. The university has a track record of innovative research and development in multiple fields of technology applicable to aerospace. It's earned this distinction thanks to the top flight facilities at the McNair Center, where we sit today, such as its advanced composite manufacturing lab, the likes of which I haven't seen at any other university in the world, uh, and thanks to its faculty members, who have, such as Professor Gerdahl, uh, someone I've known and respected for decades, literally. Uh, who have strong expertise in subjects we consider to be critical uh, to the future of aerospace, such as thermoplastic composites, uh, inspection and maintenance uh, research, et cetera. Just a whole broad variety. What's more, uh, we at Boeing see many synergies between the work uh, that we're conducting across our company, including the research at our new R&D center in North Charleston that Lane Ballard is leading, and the research done here at the McNair Center. Seeing those things work together, we think, causes some real uh, great potential. As a result, we viewed the university as an outstanding R&D partner uh, that can support not just our South Carolina operations, but everything we do around the globe in terms of engineering research and technology, including our commercial and our space and defense businesses. That's why we at Boeing believe this agreement will be good for our company very good for our company. In addition, we believe it'll have a positive effect on the university as well as the state of South Carolina, a real win-win agreement for all parties. This agreement also has uh, substantial benefits for one other key constituency, and that's the bright students at the University of South Carolina. Uh, thanks to this agreement, students will have the opportunity to research promising technologies that will lead to the next generation of market-setting uh, innovations in aerospace. The future prospects of Boeing and the aerospace industry depend on our collective ability, ours and the universities, and the states for that matter, to recruit a workforce made up of diverse, talented, team-oriented people that have great technical skills. And the University of South Carolina students who take part in our research collaborations will gain experiences that make them better prepared to compete in the global economy and that will help them contribute strongly to their profession and to their communities. I'd like to close with one last thought. In the future, you'll hear about Boeing airplanes that feature cutting edge technologies that reinforce Boeing's reputation as a global leader, not only in aerospace technology, but in innovation in general, and that are really awe-inspiring uh, to people around the world. When you learn about these marvels of engineering, please know that there's a very good chance that the University of South Carolina and the Palmetto State will have had a big hand, uh, along with the students and faculty, in making these things come to reality. Thank you very much uh, for all your contributions uh, to making this center happen, and it's just a true honor for Boeing to be part of the community here. Thank you very much.
And it's an honor, as Dr. Pasti has already mentioned, that uh, it's an honor, truly an honor to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Cheryl McNair. the kind remarks. Thank you so much. And greetings to everyone here, to administrators, to Dr. Pasides, to the initial donors, Anita Zuckerberg, Dollar Moore, and Marva Smalls. Oh, there you are. Okay. And to all the distinguished guests here. Thank you, Dr. Pastides, for inviting me here today to help celebrate this wonderful announcement with Boeing. This partnership will ensure that exciting research will be taking place here many years from now. And I feel Ron would have been extremely honored very pleased to know that this center is dedicated to him. Almost 30 years ago, our nation stood witness to tragedy. 73 seconds after launch while traveling 46,000 feet in the air, the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded before our eyes. The entire crew was killed, my husband included. We were stunned and horrified. Instantly, we were reminded of life's fragility and that exploration is very, very hard and not without great risk. America wept and the world wept with us. But we rebounded and regrouped. We learned. This drive to continue forward through tragedy to triumph gives me great hope for our communities, our workforce, and our nation. We reached for greater heights and new discoveries. And with this generous, contribution from Boeing, I believe we will continue our quest, reaching much greater heights and many more new discoveries. And from right here in the Ronald McNair Aerospace Research Center in the University of South Carolina. In many ways, coming to this center and back to South Carolina bring things full circle for me. Many of you may not know that Ron and I had always planned to move back to South Carolina following the Challenger mission. In fact, he had intended to take position at the University at South Carolina, a place where he had family and many friends. So how ironic, how wonderful that the university should have this research center named after him. More than anything, he wanted to come back here to help make a difference. Being raised in Lake City, he understood the unrealized potential of too many of South Carolina's children. As an educator myself, I've seen firsthand the power that education can have to alter the course of a young person's life. Ron and I shared the belief that science education in particular is the key to opening doors to vast opportunities. We need more children to get excited about careers in the STEM fields. Jobs in science and technology don't only help grow the economy, 
they also are essential to growing our understanding of the world around us. That is why I'm so pleased to know that in this very building, students will learn and work alongside top aerospace, aerospace researchers. They will get the kind of hands-on instruction that will lead to great careers as engineers, designing the next generation of aircraft. If this center can help young people develop their talents, believe in their own potential, and ask the kinds of questions that lead to new scientific discoveries, then I can think of no more fitting tribute to Ron's life and legacy. I hope you will all join me in wishing the university and Boeing well in this endeavor. Thank you. You Thank you, Mrs. McNair. And our last speaker tonight, today, excuse me, this afternoon morning, is Professor Goodall, or Zafir, as I say, Goodall. He's the inaugural holder of the Ronald E. McNair Endowed Chair at the University of South Carolina. Prior to his appointment at USC, he held a Chair of Aerospace Structures and Computational Mechanics at Technical, Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands. He also holds Professor Emeritus appointments at Virginia Tech, where he was Professor jointly appointed between the aerospace and the ocean engineering and engineering science and, me and mechanics departments. Professor Goodall, research interests are in the structural and multidisciplinary design and optimization, design and optimization of composite materials and structures and computational methods for design with manufacturing emphasis. His research has largely been funded by NASA, LARC, the AFR, SR in the US, and the EU research framework in Europe. Professor Goodall is New, has numerous publications, co-authored of four books. He also oversaw, oversaw graduation of numerous masters and PhD level researchers. So, uh, Dr. Gazal, good all. Thank you, Bill, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's an honor for me to be on this podium uh, together with John Tracy and uh, President Pastidis. And it's especially fitting that uh, we are sharing this momentous occasion with uh, Ms. Uh, uh, McNair. From the day one that I assumed the directorship of the McNair Center, Ronald McNair's legacy has been one of our inspiration and guidance and became the backbone of our work in education, research, and innovation. I'm also delighted to see our uh, donors, our uh, benefactors, all here today. Uh, because without their vision and uh, generosity, the McNair Center would not have happened. Today is a dream come true for more than one way for me. I don't have the time to go through the strategy that we used for building the McNair Center, but it should suffice to say that uh, our approach, simply put, was uh, uh, teamwork. Teaming with faculty from different departments, different colleges of the university, teaming with uh, state and national universities, teaming with international universities, teaming with local businesses, national and international companies. This is how we approached uh, building this particular center. And today, we are adding a new member to our team, a giant in our field. Over the course of the last six months, uh, we have formed a local team from two different colleges of in excess of 20 faculty members who shared their vision and thoughts with the Boeing engineers and researchers across the nation. These were people from California, people from St. Louis, people from Philadelphia, people from California, I said California, Seattle, Seattle, and of course the new, brand new uh, research and technology center down in Charleston, South Carolina. We identified, as uh, John stated, uh, seven technology, technology areas that we will cooperate and we're working on defining a number of projects 
that we will work with Boeing engineers and researchers as a team. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a, a real teaming, and I must uh, admit that this is not just a team, but it's actually a dream team. Uh, this is also a dream come true for me for another reason. Uh, what you don't see behind the walls to your right is a, a, a brand new uh, manufacturing, uh, composite manufacturing facility for uh, the university and for McNair Center. I will elaborate the, about the, the, the facility in a, in a little bit, but uh, uh, I consider this to be just a small piece of our work, hopefully just a small piece, that, uh, that our vision, in, in our vision of building a bigger McNair enterprise that will, uh, that will span broader areas than just the manufacturing of uh, composite structures and materials. We are not about manufacturing materials and structures only. Uh, we have activities, we envision activities relevant to all aerospace uh, field going beyond the engineering, including the colleges of education, colleges of art and science, and of course, Darlemore School of Business. Our core mission is education, uh, a comprehensive aerospace education that includes BS, MS, and PhD programs, as well as certification programs for continuing education. We already initiated a master's degree program under the mechanical engineering, and we have a minor in aerospace engineering, again under the mechanical engineering department. Our next important goal is to build an undergraduate aerospace engineering program. We, and when I say we, I'm not just referring to the McNair Center, but referring to the people of this uh, university, the state, and people of this state, that we owe to the young generation of new uh, South Carolinians to have a BS program in aerospace engineering so that they can pursue their dreams here at home. Now something about our dream laboratory that you'll see in a, in a, a little bit. As you will walk through the facility, you will perhaps be surprised to see some large pieces of hardware. Uh, this was not a, a coincidence that we have these large pieces. It was by design. We are proud to have the only industry strength, strength composite manufacturing hardware in the country, in any, any university in the country, and probably among the very few universities in the world to have this kind of a capability. I will not get into technical details why we chose this direction of putting realistic uh, machines, but it will be basically suffice to say that our students will have the experience with real life structures and components. This country graduates roughly about 3,500 aerospace engineering students every year. And I know for a fact that a very large portion of these students have never touched a real aerospace component or even seen one. We just work with models. McNair Center is designed to actually break this uh, gap or fill this gap and uh, uh, have our students have, uh, have the real experience. Besides the students, McNair Center also partially funded the economic impact study. And we discovered that this state has over 450 uh, companies doing work in, in aerospace related fields. These are small businesses, some of them two, three individuals, uh, mid-sized companies, and of course, large corporations as well. The facility that we have should broaden the vision of small companies to really think big, will enable them to do things that otherwise they will not be able to do. For mid-sized companies, develop prototypes and products that would someday become part of a supply chain for large companies. And of course, for large companies, have the talents train in place working with real equipment so that the companies will not spend years training, retraining these students to become actually part of their enterprise. In some sense, the facility should create an, an ecosystem where students, researchers, faculty, engineers from companies will get together to push the, the, the economy of the state of South Carolina forward. Finally, I'd like to make a remark related to the remark of Dr. Tracy. I believe he said something along the lines that, that, uh, that there's a good chance that some of the technologies that we'll see in future aircraft might be coming from University of South Carolina. 
John, I don't like to leave things to chance. <laughs> I, I, I take this as a challenge. And I accept the challenge. And we're going to do our best, and we're committed to ensure that the technologies that we work on today will one day become part of the Boeing product line. Thank you all. So that, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in. That concludes our formal program. If I can have our donors come up, Anita, Darla, Marva, uh, Mrs. McNair, uh, for a photo op. But also, it doesn't end here. If you could go to your right, you have a tour and a reception back in the McNair Center. So uh, if anyone else would, uh, and for interviews for the press after this meeting, that will be available for, for interviews. Thank you very much. <laughs>